Oh, one other thing, guys. Does anyone want to buy one of these? I have a small mount. I can actually post the dimensions. I believe in between it's like five and a half inches here by, I want to say by 12 inches or roughly, I think 11 inches by another five inches or so. Um, small battery tray. Don't have the top mount for it. So if anyone's looking to buy one of these, uh, I've had this for probably four or five years now and just never used it because I don't feel like dealing with the cranking issues when it comes down to small batteries. I know the problem with those. Um, some people don't mind it and they'd rather have the show and the looks. I'm just being honest. Now there is some really expensive batteries out there that still have the good cold cranking amps and you don't have to deal with it. But I really don't feel like spending that kind of money on a battery. So if you guys want this or something like it and on the bottom there's just like sticky residue, it can come off. But uh, yeah, anyone looking to buy one, let me know. Shoot me a message on my Facebook page which is linked down below. All right, so let's get this started then. Piggybacks versus flashing versus standalones. You know, what's the best option for you? Where should you be going with all this? What's gonna work best for you? Certain cars are better at this than others, uh, especially when it comes for piggybacks or flashing. Uh, some cars, you know, older, something like this. I don't really have that capability, especially with the flashing part of it. Uh, now, chipping was something big back in the day and companies like Mines, um, I think there was another company too that did that chip these ECUs, a company called GeForce that chipped these ECUs, but it was still very limited. Um, they would usually raise a rev, uh, rev limiter, uh, usually eliminate the, the speed limiter. Usually they're limited to like 120, 125, I believe. Don't quote me on that. Um, and it got rid of all that for you. But it's a very old school way of doing it and it's nothing really done like that anymore. Um, I know some of the guys in the Honda game still kind of do that, but it's a very old methodology of going about it. And there's just so many better options out there. It's not necessary, um, so why do it? I, it's also kind of going down the piggyback route. Uh, with a Supra and stuff, the way the uh, ECU is made in these, it fights it the entire time, period, end of story. Now the older Mark III's don't seem to have this issue, but the Mark IV's are, tend to do this a good bit. Uh, as soon as you put it in, you start trying to add more fuel or to try to bump it up, the ECU the whole time is fighting you. Some of the other cars, like a DSM of some sort, seem to be okay with it. They can run an AFC and have no problems. You add or start to push more fuel, no problem. The ECU doesn't mind, but some cars like the Toyotas, they just hated them, never really worked well. Um, and newer cars, if you have OBD2, don't even bother. It's just not even worth it. It's going to fight you the entire time. Unless you have an older school, uh, late 80s, early 90s car, it's, just, it's not worth the extra headache and stuff. You might as well just, if I were you, um, Go to a standalone. I know that's like, oh, it seems ridiculous, but as cheap as standalones are getting now, a company called EMU and Megasquirt, they sell like basic ECUs now for seven to $800. Now, they're low-end versions, but they still, they're still a standalone ECU, and they do everything that you could want and then some, um, especially considering that back in the day, an AMV1, which is a joke anymore, um, was, Jesus, over $2,000 and was finicky and has all the issues. These cheap ECUs for six $700 don't have these problems now. So that's definitely the route you should if I were you, I would gear towards and go down. Uh, it also get, opens up more, more choices for you, more options down the road. You know, it, better control of the engine. You know, piggybacks are just finicky because you're tr literally trying to, to convince or cheat the ECU to think, okay, the ECU says to do this, but the piggyback's saying, well, we should really add some more fuel over here. And it just, to me, it's just begging for issues where standalone is replaces everything. Uh, you get better knock control, uh, better air fuels. It just, it's a better idea all around. Now, downside once again is the cost of it all. Sorry, I had to take a Red Bull break real quick. Now that I got that done, let's continue. So, talking about the piggybacks and going over the standalones and stuff. Now, where does this piggyback come in handy? Like I said, late 80s to early 90s cars, it was the tits. I mean, even a lot of the super guys did run back in the day. Uh, the SAFC, um, VPC, GCC setup, but it just, it's, not, it's not perfect. The guys did it for a long time, don't get me wrong. And it, it worked to a point, but it, it didn't get squeezed out every bit of power you could get out of the car with the Motex of the world, Pro EFI, AM, like I run in my car, uh, Mega Squirt, EMU, Haltech. G I mean, there's just so many ECUs available now, and the market is so competitive now, unlike it was in the early 2000s. You can get standalone so cheap now, and the quality has gotten so good. I mean, AM was known for being so finicky, and even with the Infinity, they had their quirks at first now, but... Dude, I turn this car on and don't, I could drive this cross country and not think twice about the ECU and the wiring in it anymore. It's gotten so good now that I just don't even think about it. Um, all, this, all the fail safes that come with the standalone, it just makes it that much better too. You know, God forbid if I would overboost, say uh, the wastegate would stick and it would just shoot up to, say, try to shoot up to 35 PSI. Well, I have it set at 23 and a half PSI. If it hits that, boom, shut the car down. And I've, I've tested it personally. Works each and every time. No issues, flawless. Um, not control works real well. 
Uh, it just it just gives you all these other options that say a piggyback wouldn't and then like I said a piggyback could work per se But it's just not going to give you all those options and all those fail safes give you that extra power you want I mean if you're building a car to make more power Why rob it of that power by using a cheaper ECU or cheaper piggyback? It just doesn't make sense now when you're talking standalones versus a flashed ECU This is where it gets a little finicky um, when you're talking domestic or you're talking Evos and Subarus, those guys are able to flash their ECUs, and I think this is like the be best thing since sliced bread. Um, I remember DSM Link being real big. Uh, now nah, that's different, but I just think this is the, that's the route to go down, especially if you're staying at certain power levels and even higher. I mean, there's GTR guys making well over a thousand horsepower on a Cobb ECU, which just flashes the stock ECU. Um, it retains all the stock controls, stock ECU, just makes the things very simple. Now, they have proven with guys going to MoTeC or standalones that you can squeeze out the extra power once again with the standalone. You are still robbing yourself of those few extra bits of power or torque and horsepower by not going to a standalone. You just have better control of the car itself, has more mapping, um, better resolution. I'm not sure, if, I'm not going to go into like how the whole resolution stuff works, but there's better re resolution there. There's more area to add fuel, take fuel, etc. with an aftermarket ECU. Um, but then again, you're talking about rewiring, uh, patch harnesses, setting everything up, cold starts, making sure you have an ECU with a GTR. You have to make sure you have Cyvex or if you have uh, Pro EFI to make sure you get the shift points right because you have an automatic transmission with a manual. You don't have to worry about that, but newer cars you do. So that's where using a flash ECU makes things very simple for you. And it takes out a lot of that headache that someone like myself would have to deal with. Now, uh, the Super itself, I couldn't use the AM Infinity with an automatic car. It doesn't have uh, automatic trans control. So I'm shit out of luck there. Now, there's guys that do it and just let it shift like crap. But to me, that doesn't make sense. It's electronically controlled. If you have Pro EFI that does it, does it from what my understanding is, flawlessly. So... That's where it kind of gets finicky too. If you know, if I, if it was me and I owned an Evo or if I owned a GTR, I would try to push as long as I could or keep it as safe as I could on a flash DCU. Now, once again, if you're trying to push for that extra little bit, you're going to have to go to a standalone, get that extra knock control, get that extra fail safes, uh, so far, so forth, and so forth. Um, it, but once again, that comes down to personal preference at that point. Um, but once again, this is my opinion, guys. You know, don't take me as the holy grail. I am not a shot, but this is my opinion on everything, especially from helping friends out in their cars, seeing what they're doing. It, it's all it's all up to you what you want to do. Um, I prefer standalone just because I've always been a super guy. I've always been a tour guy, and that's pretty much the route you've always had to go down. Now, seeing my friends with their STIs and Evos and the whole Cobb thing, that's pretty awesome. I mean, it's pretty cool that you just plug it into your OBD2 port, punch in a few numbers, especially with the Cobb, especially if you have basic bolt-ons. Do a few things. Yep, I got this intake, this exhaust, boom, boom, boom. Gives you a little bit more power, turns the boost up, and that's it. It's literally like a, a Game Boy. It's, it's amazing how far technology has come and how simple it has made everything these days. Um, yeah, so that's just my opinion on that situation. So again, guys, this is just my opinion. Uh, I want to know what your comments are like below. Let me know what you think. Uh, you can tell me an idiot for all I care. Uh, this is just my opinion on the situation. Like I said, if it's me. Going standalone, I like the full control. I like that it simplifies everything for me. Uh, I like to have the extra things like uh, track control, um, the fail safes, the, the ability to change boost on the fly. It just There's so many more options when you go standalone. Uh, that's just my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong. Let me know if you have other opinions on this. If you say there's things you like more about a flash DCU or maybe you even like the piggybacks. Some people still like them. I know there's, I have a friend, uh, Freddy, who poor man amounts here. He is still running a Gretty Emang Ultimate on his MK3 Super. Now, the ECU and that's different. It doesn't fight it like the MK4s do. But, hey, if that works for him, that's fantastic. So, guys, let me know what you think and comment below. As usual, guys, thank you very much. I love that you all tune in. Um, it's Sunday. Got my Red Bull. I'm going to go get my wife McDonald's here in Waynesboro because she fucking loves McDonald's. Um, last time I was there, I, uh, some people actually recognized me, which is a little weird, which is pretty cool, though. So maybe I'll see them again. I like to talk to people out in public if they recognize me, which is pretty cool, I think, still. So if you ever see me in public, please come up to me, say hey, say hello, say what's up. You know, it is what it is, bruh. Shoulder dance, shoulder dance, shoulder dance. All right, I'm done. Fuck this. Peace out. I, I need to go drink a beer.